So we've all been there when payday hits and you have a look at your bank account and you're just thinking, I need to get paid way more for what I actually do for this company because this is just not enough. And then you have those thoughts going through your head of like, ugh, I don't want to have to ask for a raise, it makes you sweat and all of that stuff, but I've got you in this video. So we are going to talk about the ways that you can actually increase your salary without negotiating with your boss for a raise and having that awkward conversation. Sometimes those conversations are necessary but other times there's other ways that you can achieve the same thing and I'm going to share the two ways that I've done that one of those ways actually allowed me to triple my income in just over two years and you can definitely do it and I'm going to be sharing those two top strategies with you in this video before we get into that though if you're new to this channel my name is Adele welcome I'm a lawyer and I'm an entrepreneur that's based out of Dubai originally a Londoner as you can tell from my accent and on this channel I love to share things to really inspire and help people level up with their careers and their lives. I think that your life should be for living and if you're working you should be getting the most out of it. You should be paid for the value that you provide for the company and you should always continue to level up. So that's what this video is about. If you're into things like that make sure you click the like button before we even get into this. Subscribe and you turn on your notifications so that you know every time I post a new video. I'm going to be posting a lot more of these videos every week so you don't want to miss out. Before I get into the two main ways to increase your salary I just wanted to talk about something really briefly because it runs through whatever strategy that you use the first is that you actually need to be worth the money that you are going for this goes without saying but I've realized that a lot of the reasons why people are actually nervous about going to their bosses to ask for an increase in salary is because they have this fear at the back of their mind that oh they're gonna say no or that you know maybe the company doesn't have any budget or whatever but one thing I always tell people is that that whatever you do, whether you have a business or you're working, you need to be the forefront of your career. Essentially, you need to know yourself. You are a commodity. You are a commodity that you're selling. So if you know that you have value, why would you be selling yourself short? So if you are worth, say like gold is worth like $1,600 for like a bar of gold, right? And you had that at home and you don't have a lot of money, but you have this piece of gold and you know that there's huge demand in the market for this piece of gold, would you go to the market and sell it to the first person that asks you for 700 it's so important for you to know your pains you know why you want this extra money in the first place and then the second thing is to know your goals like where do you want to be with your career and then the third is to actually know your value so if you're worth more then you should be confident to speak to your boss and say hey look this is what I've brought to the company I would really appreciate it if that is recognized and you pay me extra money <laughs> so I'm gonna talk about how to do this properly in a different video but in this video, I'm going to share how I was able to increase my salary by just over 40%, like pretty much immediately. So that's one of the first strategies. And then the second one, which I'm going to share towards the end of this video, so make sure you stay tuned, is something that I did to help me triple my income to multiple six figures in just over two years. I think maybe just say two years and six months, right? Okay, so let's talk about the first one. If you've been following me for a while, you probably have an idea of what this is you just need to look through my video backlog to see because you can tell when the changes on my career started happening and that is to actually take a job abroad move don't ask your boss look at what's in the market and make that step do you know why basically the average millennial earns 35% more than their home country salary when they move abroad and this is not something that I made up you can check I will put the link in the description box below this is based off the findings of HSBC's global expat survey the one that they did in 2019 and it's very easy to see why so I will give you my personal example like when I was in London I was working as a lawyer I was earning X amount of money but I was paying about 40% tax and then when I moved to Dubai like pretty much my next paycheck I was earning 40% more because I was not paying any tax that is right in Dubai it's 0% income tax so think about how much money you save every month just by being able to have this extra disposable income and a lot of people sell themselves shorts for this because they're worried about making a big change in their career or living in a different country what that's going to be like but when you look at the maths 
Are you able and willing to leave at least 35% more of your current salary on the table? If you are, then I mean, psh, please, can you give me some money? Because I'm always up for some more money. Like for me, now that I see so many people traveling on Instagram and like just going on holiday and getting broke by doing this, I'm like, why don't you do this a different way? Why don't you take your career abroad? And actually, this is one of the reasons why I started my own business. I'm not going to talk about that in this video because I'm not trying to sell you or anything, but the whole point is to really get you to think that look even if you are in a relationship even if you are married with kids you should really think about what opportunities are available for you here is the thing you don't have to move to Dubai you can basically move anywhere you just need to think about it strategically check out the income tax rates in your current country what you're spending money on every month and see what the cost of living and what the lifestyle and the tax rates are in other countries you could consider Australia you can consider Singapore the whole point is that when you move there, you should be able to be saving more money because maybe your tax liabilities are less. Maybe you're not spending as much money on social security or health insurance or things like that because that is covered by the government. These are all things that will allow you to have extra money in your bank account every month. So essentially you're increasing your salary, but in a roundabout way. And I think that this is so important to consider, especially now the world is becoming increasingly more expensive depending on your, you know, where you live. And I know that some people have families and they have responsibilities and it's not that easy to just get up and move. But if you do your cost benefit analysis, you might see that actually, instead of you trying to kill yourself at work and trying to really hustle and you know maybe get this promotion and negotiate a higher salary, your current job is probably valued a lot higher in a different country. And it means that you can command an extra salary without even asking for it. So maybe you go with your family or you go in a long distance relationship with your boyfriend for a year and just think about what that means for the next year or the next season of your life because you have a healthier income, healthier disposable income to do essentially whatever it is that you want to do. So always recognize and always be on top of your value, not just in your local market, but internationally as well. And don't think, oh, I can't do this job. Maybe my job is so niche that I can't do it in a different country. Actually do the research before you come to that conclusion. Because initially I said, oh, I'm a lawyer. I can't, you know, work abroad. I can't work in certain places because I practice English law but the type of law that I did was transferable to most countries because a lot of the contracts were based on English law so for me it was a no-brainer like Dubai wasn't even on my radar but as soon as I realized that I could earn at least 40% more by living there I knew that I had to make that change even if it was for one year and even if I had to like cover my face I was like girl you can do that because I don't have rich parents like I knew if I wanted to buy my own place and do anything like that I needed to get my own money and even though though I was on a good lawyer salary in the UK, anyone that lives there will tell you that at this point you need to be earning bucket loads of cash before you can actually get a deposit on your own place and things like that. So that's definitely something for you to consider. Have you ever thought about living abroad? If you wanted to, where would that be? Like, have you really thought about it? If you have and you need help, just click the link in the description box below. There's a free resource that I've created to help people who are considering like living in a different country to really navigate that process and see what it takes to actually get a good job abroad. It's totally possible. It's not this super complicated thing. You can actually do it. You just need to actually start changing the way that you think and go for it. Now for the second strategy. So if you've been working in any sort of corporate environment, I want you to answer below whether you know anyone that has been made redundant or let go of. I'm pretty sure anyone who's had any sort of job can say yes to this question. I wanted to say that the second strategy for you is to job hop. Literally drop any sense of like company loyalty that this is a company that you will be with for the next 10 years because there are so many market factors that could actually affect your longevity at the company. And even beyond that, I will tell you now that the people at the top have their own goals. And for example, you might be super close to the CEO. He started the startup and you never know when he's going to sell this company, right? And if he does, you're going to have an influx of new people come in that could really affect the dynamics of the company that you work in. And I think on the whole, I was reading a statistic that I think less than 9% or something of Americans stay in jobs for longer than 20 years now because the market has moved so quickly. Things have changed. And I think that if you recognize yourself as a very valuable person and you go to places where you're not just like tolerated, but you are 
appreciated. You won't really have to worry about your salary because you'll be working in places where you won't be selling yourself short. So most of the companies that I've worked for, thankfully, have always kind of recognized that. But then I've always kept my eye on the ball for the market. So if I know, for example, that another company which is very similar to my current company is, there's a, what? There is a bug in my room. <laughs> Oh no, oh my God. Anyway, I'm just gonna keep talking and don't pretend that I can't see this moth. So if I know that a competitor law firm that basically does pretty much the same as what I'm currently doing is offering more and they have a similar job culture, like what's stopping me from moving? And that's essentially what I did. So like I mentioned to you guys before, when I moved abroad, I increased my salary by 40%. And then we went through a phase in one of my companies where like pretty much half of the people in my old law firm moved to a different law firm. And I had friends in that other law firm that were like really really good friends of mine and gave me really good insight into the company and the culture and things like that so I decided when they approached me to work for them I was like well why wouldn't I do this I loved my old law firm and I still do I have so much love for them but I knew that ultimately I wanted to be an entrepreneur and I needed to have a healthy bank balance to start my own company in a few years so I did this and essentially I ended up earning more than I think probably about another like 35% I'm just going to be conservative more by switching firms than if I just stayed there like if I'd stayed at the old law firm of course I would have received a salary increase but just by job switching I was able to do this without you know any bad blood any uncomfortable situation anything like that and I think that this is something that a lot of people sometimes are worried about maybe you have a really good relationship with your manager and you don't want to upset them or whatever but you have to think which is more important for you like what are your goals what are your career goals where are you trying to be and then does your manager fit in with that if you you're going to leave and start a company with your manager at some point then great but if your manager is not going to basically feed your children and all of these things in a few years then you need to always focus on yourself as a priority I hope I haven't gone on a tangent there because I know that my battery is dying and I'm trying to really hammer on the point but it's so 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 important I think that don't jump around and like go through the squad <laughs> But essentially, you should be able to keep your pulse on the market and decide when it's the right time for you to change companies or pivot. And that is an easy way for you to increase your salary without aggro and stuff. And one of the best ways to do this, to keep an eye on the market without actually going out there all the time, is to keep your LinkedIn profile up to date, guys. Any new skills that you have, any new like work experience that you do that's relevant, that's something that's like amazing that the market is really appreciating, think you should put it on your LinkedIn because this is how recruiters will find you and approach you and let you know if something or a better opportunity is in the market. That's something that I always did and it's something that I also teach my students to do because this is one of the ways that they get job offers abroad without actually actively applying. That's a whole different topic and I'll talk about that if you guys are interested in how to find jobs abroad, how to actually change companies and things like that. Just leave a comment below so that I know that you have enjoyed this video and you've gotten some value from from it. But anyway, this is the perfect time for me to introduce a concept that I'm going to be running on this channel called Work Abroad Wednesday. So I know a lot of people who follow me have been really interested in my international career journey from the years ago when I lived in Paris to living in Dubai and briefly living in Colombia last year and a number of the places that I've worked for, from on business trips throughout the course of my career. So I'm going to be talking about all of those things every Wednesday and giving you guys strategies that you can actually adopt to build your own international lifestyles where you are earning money you don't have to beg for a salary increase and you're also living your best life you're able to travel and you're able to experience the world because I think for me life should always be about balance you should be successful in your career but that shouldn't be at the detriment of any of the other things that you like to do and I love that living abroad allows me to really do all of those things and that is one of the premises of my channel and really helping you guys explore all of the destinations that you want to go to with your career essentially so thank you guys for watching make sure you like this video and you comment below and let me know of your own experiences have you ever done any of the things that I suggested before have you switched jobs of course you probably have have you worked abroad how was that experience for you share your comments below and if you're looking for more resources then check out these videos that I've posted previously all right thank you guys for watching bye